do you move on after a soul-crushing breakup? If you are absolutely heartbroken by the ending of a relationship, this video series is for you, and I am right there with you. But we're going to go from heartbreak to healing in this video series on Breakup Survival School. In this week's video, I'm going to give you my top seven tips and tactics to get through week two of a soul-crushing breakup. So here we are in week two. I'm so sorry that you're going through this pain, but please know you're not alone. You're still going to be on a roller coaster of emotions this week, but if you're like me, by the end of week two, a little reality is starting to set in. So let's get into week two emergency tactics. Number one, no contact. You may have heard this rule before, and it's easier said than done. But if you are able, meaning you don't share a house, kids, or a business with your ex, go no contact. What I mean by that is everything from delete and block them from all social media. Uh, it means get rid of anything from your site that reminds you of them. It means deleting their friends or unfriending their friends. Uh, I even deleted all of our photos. This is probably the hardest tactic for most people. Many of us at this stage are still hoping that this is all a misunderstanding, and who knows, maybe it is. But there's two reasons to use this no contact tactic. Number one, because it truly is the fastest way to end your addiction to your ex. And yes, you are chemically addicted to them. So this is cold turkey. It'll feel like torture and there will be tears, but it is the most expedient way to heal. You don't necessarily have to maintain the no contact rule for the rest of your life, but for a period of time, you certainly do. That period of time is for you to heal, to get over them and to grow. If that is truly what you wanna do, no contact is the way. The second reason to go no contact is to give them time to miss you, to really miss you, to feel your absence in their life. And at first they'll be super excited about getting that space they wanted, um, getting room to do whatever it is they want, um, whatever they feel they need to do. But in 30 or 60 or 90 days, that person's going to be missing you. And it won't be until then that it sinks in what you not being in their life truly means. Only after that period of no contact will they have time to reevaluate. Now, many people use the no contact rule as a way to kind of play hard to get. Yes, it can work, but don't go into it with that mindset at all. If he can't jump through hoops to get you back if you're not gone. There's a difference between being hard to get and being ungettable. Ungettable is what we're going for here. Go into no contact as a way to heal and grow. Focus on yourself and become so secure and happy and in love with yourself that you don't particularly care if they're back. You must be ready to work on yourself during this time of no contact or there's really no point to it at all. Tactic number two, write a letter. I know there's things that you want to say to your ex. There may be unfinished feelings. There may be stuff you want to get off your chest. And that can lead people to break no contact. But instead, try tactic number two and write it all out in a letter. Call him every name in the book. Tell him exactly how badly he hurt you. Tell him all the reasons he sucked. Or tell him how sorry you are for your part in all of this. But... Don't send him the letter. Don't put it in a text or an email. Burn it, delete it, bury it in the backyard. The important thing here is that by writing it out, by expressing it on paper, well, that's like therapy, it's cathartic. I know for me, it just lifted a weight off of my shoulders that I was just able to express those things without breaking no contact. 
Number three, romance blackout. What do I mean by this? Don't sit home with a box of tissues and a bowl of ice cream and watch Notting Hill and The Notebook over and over again. Don't listen to sappy love songs and certainly not your song if you have a your song. Don't do it. This is a way that we torture ourselves. We re-traumatize ourselves. Instead, watch movies that make you feel good, make you feel happy, that are empowering. Uh, listen to music that makes you want to dance, that makes you feel sexy. Okay, this is not a time to re-traumatize yourself. This is not what you need right now. So go on a romance blackout. Number four, accept reality. The final step in the grief process is acceptance. Now, you're still going to go back and forth through the stages. We're only in week two. But the fastest you're able to accept your ex's decision or your own to leave the relationship, the quicker you can heal. Suffering is optional. So accept what is and begin to love what is. Find just three things that you can look forward to in your new single life, whether that's more freedom, more time with friends or family, maybe it's a new apartment you can decorate. Accept what is and find some joy in the way that things are going to change. Number five is patience. Like I mentioned, you're still on a roller coaster this week and please, please be patient and kind with yourself. Don't get angry at yourself for not being in the acceptance phase and don't feel hopeless because you're hoping for a reconciliation that isn't coming. Understand that those feelings are going to crop up, but please be kind to yourself. Let them come up, feel them, and then let them go. Remember, emotions don't last very long at all unless we invite them to hang out. Number six, read Breakup Boot Camp. Okay, this lady wrote the book on breakups. If you're like me and you're just, you feel unlucky in love, or maybe you've noticed some patterns in your love life, this book is for you. One day I'll do a video on this book on my best takeaways from the breakup boot camp. Number seven is avoid backsliding. So there may be a time this week or in the coming weeks where you might backslide. There may be a moment when your ex waffles on their decision to leave the relationship, or you do, um, if you're the one who ended it. You might think, did I do the right thing? Again, emotions are running really high right now, and you may be confused. This may have been an, an impulsive decision on someone's part. I'll give you an example. I still live with my ex, and I'll be here for another week or two. The other day, he came home through the door, and I can see in his eyes regret. He looked like the man I fell in love with, not the one who dumped me. He stood in front of me, and I asked what he wanted, and he said he felt like he wanted to hug me. The rest of the morning, he tried to be close to me, and it felt comfortable to have him near me. It would be so easy for me to let him comfort me. But I had to ask myself his motivation. It turns out he just wanted to take me to bed and see if that made him feel anything. It wasn't because he was still in love with me or wanted to feel close to me. Again, a part of me wanted to fall into his arms and let him love me, but I had to think, what will this get me? And why should I go to bed with somebody who hurt me so badly? What would sleeping with him mean to me and what would it mean to him? I knew it didn't mean the same thing. Don't go back for that one last roll in the hay. I feel it will only set you back in your healing process. The only time I would feel that it's safe to do this is after a long period of no contact. When you've healed and you're no longer addicted to them or even care if they're in your life or not. So, to recap, week two, survival tactics. One, no contact. Two, write a letter. Three, a romance blackout. Four, accept reality. Five, have 
patience with yourself. Six, read the breakup boot camp. And seven, don't backslide into bed. I know these tactics are hard and you may have come here hoping I would tell you that everything's going to be okay and tell you how to win him back. But there is no magic pill and I can't make the pain go away like that. The business of healing is hard and it's messy. If healing and growth is really what you're after, then use these tips and tactics that I'm giving you and let's go from heartbreak to healed. If you found that any of these tactics are helpful, please consider hitting that like button so that more people can see these videos. And um, I would love it if you would subscribe so you get notified when I drop a new video. Until next week, remember that you're not alone. You will get through this and you are worthy of love.